We open on a misogynistic gas station attendant doing his best Ramsey Bolton impression. It's the wedding anniversary of young married couple Polly Watt and Seth Beltzer, and they are planning to spend the night camping. Polly is a real go-getter, and Seth is a nerdy guy who's working towards getting his biology doctorate. Their tent breaks because Seth clearly didn't learn tent constructing skills in his advanced epigenetics class, so they decide to hit up a motel instead. On their way, they run into a little snafu when they get carjacked by Dennis Farrell, some fugitive with a vague southern accent, and his methed out girlfriend, Lacey Belial. Polly drives while Dennis shows off his Spider-Man firearm handling technique. Nighttime rolls around and Dennis only now decides to take the hostage's cell phones. They take their car down the old town road and ride till they can't no more. Polly hits a small animal and they get a flat tire. The car is also leaking coolant. Polly and Dennis go out to change the tire and Seth goes out to investigate the roadkill with Lacey. Dennis gets a SPLINTER from the tire. The flattened animal starts twitching unnaturally and they drive away. The car overheats so they pull over to a conveniently located gas station. The same gas station where this movie began! Ooh. Dennis brings Polly inside the store to buy supplies but the place is deserted. Dennis's finger is getting all gross. Lacey goes to the washroom and accidentally opens the door on the attendant having a rough time. Lacey warns the others, but she's too late. She's killed by the deformed attendant, and Seth, Dennis, and Polly race back inside to lock themselves in the store. The thing lays to rest on the hood of the hot car. Despite being dead, Lacey starts pranking the others by twitching. Dennis goes out to see if he can wake her up. Wake her up inside. Wake her up. Wake her up inside. Save her. Call her name and save her from the dark. Lacey, now a Zombie. grabs Dennis's leg and has her fingers sheared off as Dennis crawls back inside. The splintery fingers start moving. Seth investigates the Adams Family ripoff. Zombie Lacey starts banging her head against the window. The group try to escape out the back door, but Lacey won't give them any spacey. A police officer arrives to save the day, but she unfortunately gets ripped in half. The beast conjoins the officer's upper body to itself. Dennis's finger infection is expanding. Polly and Dennis come up with the bright idea of creating a river of lighter fluid to the nearby forest to light the trees on fire and signal for help. Seth dissuades them from lighting a massive fire at a gas station. Seth sees the officer's radio on the ground by the front door and gives the children a lecture of a safer game plan. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna tape these together, snake it outside, hook the receiver, bring it up, make the call. No open doors, no being outside, no fires. Okay. Dennis's finger starts contorting and Seth reels in the catch of the day. As he reaches to grab the receiver, old Spikey drops down to join the party. They have a tug of war match and the cable snaps. Polly plungers the thing's arm and it falls off. The arm starts chasing after them and they hide in the freezer. Dennis, now becoming one with the beast that consumes him, informs Polly and Seth that the splintered beings are attracted to heat. Like Freddie Mercury, Dennis's arm wants to break free. So Seth cuts it loose with an unsterile box cutter and a cinder block. Seth takes his turn being the extremist of the group with a plan to drop his body temperature below ambient to get to the police car and radio in help. Polly starts lighting firecrackers out the back door to distract the beast. I guess forgetting they just poured 15 liters of lighter fluid down the step? Seth makes it to the cop car, but his incredibly optimistic plan is foiled when he finds out he needs keys to turn on the car to power the radio. The beast finds Seth, so Dennis goes outside to distract it. It follows him back in the building and starts ransacking the shop. Polly and Dennis hide in the freezer. The lighter fluid ignites and the gas station begins to go up in flames. Seth comes in guns a-blazing. He can't set up a tent, but he can fire a shotgun. The trio are apparently still hotter than the fire because the monster continues to attack them. With the strength of a thousand suns, Dennis shoots the shotgun one-handed, ignoring all physics behind recoil force. He wrestles with the beast before shooting the diesel tank. Unlike Billy Joel, he did start the fire, putting a thorn in the splinter monster's life and dying a martyr.
If you like bikinis, filthy cars, or just needed to give your hypochondriatic mind the idea that splinters could end your life in a second, then this movie's for you. Drop a like and subscribe if you want to see more horror recaps. Comment down below what movies you want to see butchered next. 